experiences in Italy and New York uh, through these experiences, Steinbeck learned enough to be able to draw a fuller rendition of the Italian immigrant and avoid the thin but useful caricature in his later work. There are no other appearances of Italians in Steinbeck's fiction, and where we do find references to Italy and Italians are in his World War II reporting, in which he meets Luigi the bartender on the Isle of Capri, and, the, and uh, a, few mentions, uh, a, few, a few mentions in his travel essays about Italy during the 1950s. From one of these travel reports, he finds humor in describing how he got around the country without speaking the language, and he writes, Neither my wife nor I can speak Italian, but we took up a tourist sign language which consists of one gesture. If you are explaining something in English to a man who understands only Italian, you speak very loudly and slowly, grimacing as you speak. At the same time, you put your forefinger and thumb together, make a gentle downward pulling motion as though you were milking a mouse in the palm of, into the palm of your hand. I don't know what it signifies, but everybody else does. <laughs> Steinbeck uses Italy for another humorous piece about, uh, uh, about a visit to the town of Positano, a popular tourist town along the Amalfi Coast. And finally, he mentions Italians in a list of American minorities who, after experiencing the traumas of once being the exploiter and abused newcomers to the U.S., uh, eventually, quote, join the majority and indulge in the accepted upper caste practice of rumbling some newer group. Ultimately, Steinbeck's Italians reflect a growing sophistication in Steinbeck's philosophy of the role that minorities have played in populating and challenging the definition of what it means to be an American. And I think a lot of that had to do because he probably met more Italians when he moved out, out, out this way. Now, I want to shift into Pietro Di Donato. Why? Because you know, also being a Long Island writer uh, and being always in the shadow, as he is today in today's talk, he's in the shadow of Steinbeck in a sense. I believe it is that I, I, I know Steinbeck read Dieter Nato and Dieter Nato read Steinbeck because they were you know, arch enemies in a sense that they were at least fighting each other for the attention. Uh, they both had bestsellers. Um, there's, there's no encounters between them, there's no letters between them. But I could, you could tell in their writing, when, you know, I've been reading all the, both of these writers for the better part of 40, 50 years. And the more you read one, the more you see him in the other. And it, and it wasn't like they studied together, but you could tell from, just from them reading each other. Now, let me get, I don't, how many people know anything about Pietro Di Donato? All right, good. Canio, you do, so you, can, you, you, have, you have the right to fall asleep right now. <laughs> Pietro Di Donato is among a handful of Italian-American writers who joined the Communist Party, which he did at the age of 16 on the night that Sacco and Vanzetti were executed. He took up writing during a period in which he was out of work. His first short story, Christ in Concrete, which dramatized the early death of his father in a construction accident, was published in Esquire magazine in March of 1937, and the next year reprinted in Edward O'Brien's Best Short Stories of 1938. What's going on in American culture at this time is, is the worker writer. They're interested in what the worker has to say about the world and, and, and the, their ability to write. Within two years, this short story grows into a novel. Publishers came and said, we want this guy. You know, Di Donato was, he was a bricklayer. And, 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 and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about why he became a bricklayer in the novel. Because, and published in 1930, becomes the main selection of the Book of the Month Club in 1939, chosen over Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. And, and, and in the literary community at the time was, who is this guy? You know, Steinbeck had been around. Steinbeck had earned his dues. Four years before this, he had written Tortilla Flat and, and so on. So the, and the Grapes of Wrath is this great kind of, but Steinbeck was not a worker writer. He was a writer who wrote about workers. Di Donato never intended to be a writer, but the novel's success placed him in a national spotlight. Only recently have critics begun to realize the true revolutionary figure that he was. Yet despite his absence in critical studies of American writers, Di Donato is perhaps the most well-known of the early Italian-American writers because of the impact Christ in Concrete had and still continues to have on its readers. People have referred to him 
as the grandfather of Italian American literature. And now they're doing things like flying people like me over to Italy to teach in American <laughs> studies classes these novels because the Italians who maybe have read them, maybe haven't read them, uh, see that the young kids are interested in this story, whereas the professors weren't, I can tell you. <laughs> For many critics, Giordano's first novel has become the prototypical Italian-American novel. His Italianita becomes the most obvious through the novel's diction. Giordano's word choice and word order has been pointed out in several articles. They recreate the rhythms and sonority of the Italian language. Now, there's many different registers. I've, I've written about this. A lot of people have. I'm not going to go into a great thing about it. I just want to alert you to, he uses the the, the thy, the they, which comes from where? The Bible. The influence of the Bible. That diction. And he does it when he wants to elevate what it is somebody has to say. And then he uses broken English, and he'll use Italian, the Italian language, words that are in Italian. But he's more likely to use a stilted, broken word order, you know, because it, because Italian is an inflected language, it doesn't make a difference where you put the noun and the adjective, uh, and so he does that in ways, and he'll literally translate uh, Italian saying so that you will you will not think, uh, and you'll say, well, what the heck is is is, is going on here? Uh, there's there's a curse that he, uh, there's a curse that he says, well he starts saying saints up and down and sideways and, 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 and Italian would be, you know, the, the Italians will take saints who don't perform miracles when they want them and, and they'll just curse, curse the heck out of the saints. <laughs> And it doesn't make a sense in English when you say saints upside down, up and down and around. And, but, you know, in, in the Italian language, it's, you know, it's, people know what's going on. And they're taking this, 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 uh, this saint and they're twisting him and turning him around and trying, you know. When you have to sell a house, where do you bury the St. Joseph statue? <laughs> and how do you bury it? Upside no, down. Yeah. Upside down where? <laughs> Front, front yard, not backyard. I once had a, a neighbor bury a, he didn't know the difference between St. Joseph and St. Anthony. He buried St. Anthony right side up in the backyard, complained. I went and got him a St. Joseph statue. Bingo, the next week he sold the house. Who know, I don't really believe in that stuff, but I do. She did the same thing. <laughs> I don't believe in it, but I do. I don't know how, you know. Um, while other Italian-American writers were portraying characters who struggled to fit into American life, Di Donato is a rejecting the American dream in this novel, again, which is why it continues to, to last, um, and, and which is a similar theme. You know, the idea of what, what's the American dream and how does one achieve it? He and Steinbeck were so together on so many things. So when we talk about grapes and concrete, it was the workers who picked the grapes and it was the workers who, who made the concrete. So you, you, you get this, this, um, this kind of brotherhood in theme, but you also get a brotherhood in style when you look at these things. Uh, prior to his death in 1992, Di Donato had completed uh, a novel um, that, uh, called The American Gospels, which you can find online. We're trying to get it reprint reprinted. It was never printed in which Christ, in the form of a black woman, comes to earth at the end of the world to cast judgment on key historical figures of contemporary America. This theme of Christ as a woman can be found in much, in much of what Didonato has written, and it is a theme that is usually left in the shadow of the more obvious interpretations of his work. But I think it's a theme that needs to be explored even more. His, and the reason he does this is because his Catholicism has its roots in pre-Christian matriarchal worship. As Di Donato himself admitted, admitted, quote, I'm a sensualist, he said, and I respond to the sensuality of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Its art, its mu music, its fragrances, its colors, its architecture, and so forth, which is truly Italian. We Italians are essentially pagans and realists. Now, you have to know that the word pagan comes from the uh, Latin word paganus, which means peasant. And so, the idea of being a pagan 
uh, should not have all that kind of black devil connection that, that we, we, we try to put on it sometimes. Uh, it was a way of saying, you peasants don't understand, you peasants don't underlong, uh, 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 unless you convert to this religion here, this, this Christianity. Uh, and, and they did, in, in, in many ways, just to, okay, you want us to do that? You know, how about this woman? Oh, she could be the mother of Christ. Okay, let's, we're going to keep worshiping, which is why the Italians continue to worship all these statues of Madonnas and women. Um, and, uh, but it goes way back before Christ, many of these statues. Christ in Concrete is perhaps the most mythical, mythical text of Italian American literature, as a myth that presents an heroic figure, Paul, who searches for God in the form of Christ, who he believed can save his family from the terrible injustices brought upon them through a heartless society. The novel is divided into five parts Jeremio, the father's name, Job, Job or Job. Tenement, Fiesta, and Annunziata. So the father begins the novel and the mother ends the novel. Each focusing on key figures in the myth. And Jeremiah and Job, Dieter Nader presents J-O-B as the antagonist, which controls the Italian workers led by his father, Jeremiah. Through the human forces of the heartless foreman, who he calls Murdin, M-U-R-D-I-N, the state bureaucracy that sides with the construction company during a hearing into Jeremio's death. Jeremio was killed in a in a uh, uh, in an accident, construction accident that uh, was deemed an accident when really it was the fault of the construction company not reinforcing the walls as they were tearing down some other thing. But it's also uh, you know the Catholic Church through an Irish priest who refused to to offer the family no more than a few table scraps from his rich dinner. Job, which never appears with the expected articles, like he went to the job, or let's look for a job, is depicted as a living thing, quote, that loomed up damp, shivery gray, its giant members waiting. So Job becomes this kind of monster. Job serves as the means by which, quote, America beautiful will eat you and spit your bones into the earth's hole. As one worker predicts, America, uh, as one worker predicts, in Tenement, the second, you know, the third chapter, young Paul comes to learn about the forces of good and evil in the world, and good only comes from workers' community, which is portrayed in the chapter Fiesta. Now, Paul's mother, Annunziata, who is pregnant at the opening of the novel, serves as a figure of the Madonna and represents the immigrant's faith in God, whom she invokes through prayers such as, God of my fathers, God of my girlhood, God of my mating, God of my innocent children, upon your bosom I lay my voice. To this widow alone, black and shrouded, lend of your strength that she may live only to raise her children. In this chapter devoted to her widowhood, Annunziata attempts to raise her children according to this Christian myth, but in the process she loses her son uh, and, 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 and the faith she hopes to pass on to him through recollections of her husband's show of faith. An heroic struggle occurs between man and God through the forces and the figures of Jeremio and Job. When Jeremio believes that he can gain the means to live and to eventually achieve the American dream from Job, he says, where no boss in the world can then rob me of my joy of my home. But the money he has saved for the house must be used to bury him, who along with the workers become sacrificial <coughs> victims to job and to the greedy and greed and sensitivity of the company. As Paul begins to take up the struggle where his father left off through death, he begins to see through the mass mechanism of this myth and realizes the only way to beat job is to become a part of the system to fight it. So you begin to see these common elements between Steinbeck and Di Donato of, of you know inquiring, you know, to what end does capitalism go? And, and, and this is exactly why their work was championed at a time when many of the literary critics at the, at the time were very much interested in, in what was going on in Russia. You know, our, you know was, was, was the Russian Revolution going to turn into like creating a utopia? You know, what goes on with the worker? And it's, it's right before uh, the McCarthy period that, that, that begins to happen in the United States. Uh, 
By the end of the novel, Paul's faith is nearly destroyed, as evidenced by his crushing of a crucifix offered to him by his mother. However, the final image of the novel suggests that the matriarchal powers uh, are, st are still there for her children to follow, and that they should follow them. But this haunting image can also suggest that the mother has become the new Christ, who in witnessing what America has done to her son, dies and through her death frees her son from the burden of his Catholic past. His, this death is quite, the mother's death is quite different from that of the father. Um, the father's death led Paul in search of Christ. His mother's death sends him in search of something beyond Christ. His rejection of Christ as a means to survive in this world contributes to his mother's collapse. She just can't take it. She then becomes the basis for a new faith, a faith in himself, a faith that his mother urges her children toward as she tells them to love, 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 ever love our Paul. For Dieter Dieternato, this figure of the dying mother replaces Christ as the figure through which man can redeem himself. There's no redemption through the father. For if Paul stays in the system, if he continues to interact with Job, he will end up sharing the same destiny as his father. In fact, his godfather also dies on a job later on. By directing his character's rage at the employers who exploit immigrant laborers, Pietro Di Donato argues for a solidarity among American workers and requires that they look into e to each other to solve their problems. Just as it, as it is the Italian community through the extended family that keeps Jeremiel's family together, it is the extended family of the workers that must help each other. Di Donato's rewriting of the Christ, myth of Christ while leading him away from organized Roman Catholicism leads him more towards the peasant pagan culture of his past. This return, while implicit in this reading I gave you today of Christ in Concrete, becomes explicit in all of his later work. Now you should know that at the start of World War II he registered as a conscious, ob uh, conscious uh, objector uh, and worked in a government camp in Cooperstown. He married, in 1942 he was married to Helen Dean in a civil ceremony presided over by Fiorello LaGuardia. His 1949 Christ in Concrete was made into a film directed by blacklisted director Edward Demetric and adapted for the screen by Ben Marsman. Di Donato once said that Frank Capra, he was with Fellini in, in, in one of the motion picture canteens. Frank Capra comes through and he says, Pete, when are you going to let me make your film? Imagine what would have happened if Capra would have made Christ in Concrete. Mm -hmm. And he says, you capitalist pig, I'll never let you make that film. <laughs> He ended up giving it to Edward Demetric, who was who was uh, uh, blacklisted, and the film had to be made in England, uh, and there, there, there's, there's all kinds of but and all of the actors uh, were blacklisted actors, and, and some of them were, were, were beginning actors, and it's interesting to see these young Italian American characters, uh, these these children actors, speak in. British English as they're trying to speak to their father. So if you ever get a chance to see it, it's worth seeing, but it just never would have had the impact. Uh, and they had to sneak it back into the United States. Well, they couldn't use the title uh, Christ in Concrete. The, the British censors wouldn't let them use the word Christ in the title. Uh, so it became Give Us This Day. And when they, they had to sneak it back into the United States, uh, they snuck it back as salt to the devil. Um, it won a war, an award in 1949 Venice Film Festival, but it's as far as it went. Dieter Donald's final novel was an attempt to resolve some of the sacred profane dilemma, uh, but still has yet to be published. It's, it's, it's been set, it's been rejected by the, a lot of different places, but we, we have, you know, I'm one of the people who was working on publishing it, but we're working on it. Um, but, you know, what we can see here is that he had to struggle in, in, in ways, and, and, and what happened with Dieter Nato was a, was a, a bricklayer his whole life. Um, whereas Steinbeck, I don't know, were you here when Steinbeck, you weren't here, you can't, you know, when Steinbeck was here. But, um, he, um, he didn't have to go back to manual labor where Pietro Dieter Nato always worked as a laborer. In fact, his was one house in Setauket that I had always hoped that people would say, why? Because he built a lot. He built the whole house mm -hmm. himself. Plus, he built the wall, you know.
but I, from what I understand from the sons, they, you know, when they had to sell the house, uh, everything went with it, and it's been adapted, and, you know, people have changed it, and so on and so forth. So what you'll see then is, 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 is this kind of affinity that I'm not even sure the two writers saw in their own life. You know, the, the use of, you know, the same kind of stylistic work that was done, uh, the techniques that were used in their writing, uh, well, subject matter, certainly they would have seen and agreed upon. Uh, but uh, I think by looking at uh, Steinbeck's use of, you, you see this growth in Steinbeck, uh, but you also see, I think, some of the uh, influence that he might have had from Dieter now in terms of depicting the Italian song. I think I'm done. I think I've said enough. If you have any comments or questions. Questions, comments, thoughts before we do our ways? Insights? We, uh, Charles, please. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I'm uh, interested in this question of why Italians have such a low profile. A friend of ours, Joseph Pizzano, oh. who you must be familiar with, yeah. couldn't even get an obituary in the New York Times. Mm. He was friends with Francis Winwall, who died in 1985, wrote more than 30 books. Thank you so much. Right? Neither was she recognized, oh, sure, sure. and no biographies mm -hmm. exist. For these pieces. Okay. Then you go back to what you were talking about, uh, uh, about even, uh, these off the radar. It seems like there's a pattern. Tuziani was the president of the Catholic Poetry Society of America, mm -hmm. and yet, still, like you said, could not get a bit. Uh, his brother.